Hey guys, before we dive into the show, I wanted to tell you about the perfect trailer queue blueprint, which is 100% free and you could download it right now over at the trailermusicschool.com forward slash blueprint. Now this blueprint will help you to completely understand the structure of trailer music, how to build tracks that will be more licensable and have more impact and capture the right people's attention. So whenever you start writing a cue, make sure you've got this blueprint to hand and you can use it to help speed up your process, feel more confident that you've crafted a well-structured trailer cue before you send it off to that publisher or editor or supervisor. Okay, let's get into the episode. One microphone. Welcome to the Trailer Music Composers Podcast. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Trailer Music Composers Podcast. Um, in today's episode, I wanted to give you another behind the scenes because I think this is so important for aspiring composers and you know, and fellow professional composers to see, you know, how I work. Um, and hopefully you can glean a little bit of useful information, even if it is just one nugget of gold. Uh, and I like to do walkthroughs of tracks that have landed because I think it's really, really important for you to to see and hear how the tracks have been used. So this is a track, um, the working title was Clap Happy, which is probably one of my finest titles, I have to admit. <laughs> he says sarcastically, just in case you didn't pick up on that. Um and it was for two Mammoth albums. Mammoth is an elephant music company, which were all just epic drum intros, basically, aiming for kind of action comedy, you know, basically, but uh, pushing into wherever this type of stuff worked. It's kind of just to build drive. These tracks were essentially for drive and edit points. All percussion no tonal elements uh, allowed or used. And uh, this track, Clap Happy, uh, is not, that's not the, the actual release name of the track. I, of course, don't remember what that is called. Uh, was used in the Britney versus Spears trailer on Netflix. Huge fan of Britney, so I was just like, hells yeah, when this one landed. Uh, and also it was nice to see this one get, this track get a bit of love. So what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to play the trailer so we hear this track in situ, in situ uh, and then we're going to talk about how, you know, how I built the track and then, you know, how it was used. So here we go. I just want my life back. Britney's been silenced to speak out about anything that's really going on. Britney's never had one person she could trust. Not mom, not dad. Britney had a fear that her family would barge in and take everything. What was going on inside the conservatorship? And why was she still in one if she was, quote, okay? There was financial incentives for Jamie, for the lawyers. I represented dozens of conservatees in court. Not one of them has ever had a job. Brittany made other people a lot of money. I've worked my whole life. I don't owe these people anything. No one would talk. I'm not going to acknowledge that I was ever brought in to evaluate Britney Spears. Until they did. Someone very close to the conservatorship leaked me this confidential report. Britney had to go into court a million times, all of these hours of criticizing her. It's an epic fail of the legal system that this has gone on for so long. How do you get out? You don't get out. Until you scream. <laughs> deserve to have the same rights as anybody does it's been 13 years and it's enough yeah there we go uh right now let's just talk about the trailer first of all it was two tracks being used uh, the first one wasn't mine but it was super useful and what it was doing was it was setting the mood of the trailer this kind of curious slightly sad situation um well it's not slightly sad curious and sad situation so it had this kind of air of curiosity air of sadness about it but also air of momentum like something was building and then obviously my track came in as the now let's get down to business it gives the drive it gives the impact um and the way that they used the track was i'm pretty sure they used my act two 
Yeah, they used my Act 2 as as their Act 2, and they used my Act 3. Actually, I think it was right at the end. Yeah, they cut some snippets out of there, but they used the Act 3 as their Act 3. So basically, things are ramping up, things are hotting up. What's going to happen? How did this resolve? Boom. That was the question. So with all of these tracks, I started out with small, okay? Uh, I had all my claps and snaps in one little section here. So here we go. I don't think you guys should worry too much about simplicity. And that's what I, I wasn't worried about too much simplicity. So let's. I'm just basically going on the beat, really. I mean, I I decided to, you know, for a lot of these things, Steve Reich's clapping music is my inspiration. Um, you know, da, 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 you know, that type of thing. Uh, so just one simple clap pattern backed up with other patterns. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so this is a, a little, a compositional tip. If you want to supply urgency in 4-4, four, four, one of the techniques you use is you subdivide the bar, the bar, the four beat bar, or the eight beat bar, you subdivide it into blocks of odds and evens. So in this case, it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. It's a really easy way to kind of build drive and tension with very simple rhythms. So one, two, three, ba 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 I mean, that pattern, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, so commonly used. You can do the other way, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, you know, that type of thing. My brain started to fart when I started doing that. But you get the idea. So that was all I did. Just a simple pattern, this this one here, backed up with this idea of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Uh, and then, of course, just a simple... Small little build into Act 2. Okay, so I basically wanted to keep the same thing going on. I layered up a couple of extra bits. So if you'll see here, laid up a couple of extra bits with these little claps. So again, sort of breaking up into segments of three and one, or, you know, three eighths, crotchet, eighths. I'm switching between eighths and crotchets, uh, eighths and quarter notes, etc. So this kind of stayed the same, uh, but I decided to then ramp it up, as you do in Act 2, with this idea that there was a big ensemble of people coming in, and you know the trick here is to use bigger sounding drums, emphasising certain aspects of your rhythm, which I think... One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. So they're picking up the same rhythms, basically. Okay, so this is the bit that they used. Um, and it's just a case of me taking certain elements, sticks doubling that click rhythm, and this is... More sticks supplying this urgency, this pace, this ticking clock, which if you see, that's all it is. Nothing, nothing that, nothing that complicated. Very rarely is to be fun. Okay, so this is Cerberus. Uh, that's their kick and their floor tom. Backed up with a dry sounding plastic from Damage. And a nice spacey rim. Now the thing about this is when you're writing with this type of stuff, it's good to think about the spaces. Um, I did very little panning on here because I actually quite like the panning that the drums have, but 
you think about spaces and how you can create space and impact and you do that by mixing up the space between you and the players so these tom rims they're over there in the back of the hall whereas this plastic kit that's right here in front of my face and that mixture gives you impact and space and scale and that's really really important and the same with these sticks they sound over there you know they're over there in the distance okay another trick with these ones is you know it's is to think about it is just throwing in these edit points these stops that regain the listener's attention Okay, they're not they're not only useful for the editors to kind of use as cut points, they're also useful as us listeners because when we hear the same rhythm over and over again, your ears go loop, you know? You hear it as a loop, which it is. Um even if you are layering ever so slightly, but putting these stops in, your ears go, Oop, something changed, and then when you come back in, your ears go, Oh, is this different? Because it picks up on those extra layers even more. And also, if you want to emphasize volume, the best way to emphasize volume is to show a dynamic spread. So immediately giving someone something quiet into something loud. Even if you, you know, uh, on the meter aren't actually going any louder, that's how you're going to do it. Okay, this is, uh, is it this one here? I love this one because it gives such big space. Okay, you notice also I ramp up my swish hits. Uh, I've egotistically named them Schreiber Swish, which is really hard to say. Schreiber Swish. I could have just called them Rich Swiss. What? It's, I think it's Swish. Swish is a hard word to say. Rich's Swishes. Richard Schreiber Swishes. Swish! Yeah, there we go. I should just call them Swish. Uh, ramping up that because that there's the, it's the cinematic hits, you know you're bringing in more impact, more scale with these big bad boys or bad girls, you know. Okay, I'm adding in an extra Tom. This is with the, the Hans Zimmer's uh, silo kit that they recorded with uh, Jason Bonham, I think. Um, just a nice roomy, boingy, flappy Tom. Remember what I said about stops? Bosh, that was what they used. They just cut that and repeated it. That's what they used for their third act, that last bit there. Um... I mean, that's the track. It's one minute 20. It's not long. (laughs) But it gives you the idea and the tools that are needed, you know, It gives you urgency, it gives you impact, it gives you pace, it gives you build. You know, it's gradually layering up the parts with different instruments. gives you the sense of growth, when actual fact, it's the same thing here as it is here. It's just you've brought in different sounds coming in. Such an easy tool, but... uh, so takeaways for this, guys, embrace simplicity with these, you know, start small, smart, start with clicks, claps, you know, snaps, whatever you want to call it, sticks, and then bring in the big guns later, you know, step by step. Uh, some really useful tools in this one were the Metropolis Arc big hits here. Uh, obviously, having my own swish hits was really helpful, too. Those things are absolutely vital for us trailer composers. Uh, and also, of course, I'm not going to uh, deny how much on these two albums I used Cerberus. And Damage. I mean, you can hear that that's the meat of the track there. 
with with, with regard to the impacting drums. Um, and the stomps were supplied by um, stomps and kicks. Uh, that sound. Uh, go check them out. I can't remember what the library is called. Um, so if you'd like to get into this stuff, start small and keep it simple. I mean, you don't have to use really complicated rhythms. You don't have to go all out with tons of different ideas. Just layer those same ideas with interesting sounds and think about the impact. Think about the space that you're creating. Right, guys. Um, I mean, I love doing these walkthroughs because it's quite like it's something I would have absolutely loved when I was starting out, seeing how someone's landing trailers, what they're doing. Because also the other thing I kind of want to show you is like, I'm not the best composer in the world at all. Like nowhere near. I'm not the most talented. I'm not this. I'm not, you know, I just do the work and I keep doing the work. And that's what you need to remember. Perseverance is a huge proportion of this. So I really hope you got a lot out of this. Um, if you want to watch this, I'll chuck this on my YouTube channel as well, on the on the Trailing Music School YouTube channel, that is. Otherwise, I hope you got a... Uh, I'm going to say it for the, like, the fourth time now. <laughs> I hope you got a lot out of this. I hope you got a lot out of this. And uh, you guys are legends for listening. Thank you very much, as usual, for taking your time. And I will speak to you next week. <laughs>